So first thing that we are going to see is uh, a manual SQL injection attack demo. So for this, uh, I'm going to go to this demonstration wherein I have a very simple form here. And in this form, uh, the actual working of this form is if I enter the username, it should display the salary for that specific user. So here salary is considered to be sensitive data and uh, only for that user, the salary detail should be displayed. So this form I have coded in PHP and uh, we are uh, having a database here that's uh, taking up data from that specific uh, database. So let me show you the database too. So this database uh, is a VIT. The name of the database is VIT. And we have employee table holding the data of the user names and then the salary. So if I'm searching for this specific user, the salary should be thrown as per what is available in the database. So I coded this simple PHP form and let me go to that uh, specific demonstration here. So this is this form and suppose if a user is not entering the data, it should say no employee found within that uh, database. And if the user is uh, just uh, entering some wrong uh, usernames, then it should say no employee found with that username. So this is this specific demonstration. So now we'll see how an hacker can hack into the database, fetch all the data using some malicious SQL queries. So right now the hacker can enter something like this. Uh, Quote and then or one equals one. And then when he submits it, you can see he's able to dump all the data from the database. And that is visible too. When you take a look at the database, you will see all this data out here is now visible to the hacker. So this attack is called a manual SQL injection attack. So you can perform a lot of things like you can very well ask what is the database name? by performing some union queries, union select database. So these are some SQL queries, nothing to be uh, not really worried about here. So a hacker can write some SQL queries using your user input to get the database name. The database name is VIT. You can also get to know the users, uh, who is the user of your database, current user. So you can write some queries like, uh, you can just exploit this union select user and then uh, null hash. So root is the user and uh, you can also perform various other things. I'll just uh, write one more query here. You can uh, dump all the tables in your database by this union select. Uh, so null uh, it's table underscore name from information. Uh, information underscore schema dot tables. So this will dump all the tables from your database. So you can see, you can visually see all the tables on your database and uh, you can also create uh, attack safe. For instance, there's a table by name users. So you can very well guess certain columns in the users. For instance, uh, you can go with some commands like uh, union select. Uh, you can guess the uh, fields like username, password from users and then hash. So you can very well take a look at, see now he's able to get the username and password from a different table called users. So he's able to perform a SQL injection attack using the input form. So this is called a manual SQL injection attack. Let me go back to my slides. Let's uh, take a look at this. So what we have seen now is a demonstration on manual SQL injection attack. So how this really works is we have a front end uh, client and uh, this is the form where we have given our input and the data that we are submitting here goes to a server side script which i've written in php and uh, there is this sql query which takes in the input so whatever input user is entering will be passed to this query and obviously we have a mysql database with a table a employee table maintaining our data so what happens is the first step is user enters some data here say satish and this input is passed to this query. You can very well see the query gets updated with the user's input. And uh, based on this query, this query gets executed on the table uh, and on the database server. And the result is being fetched back. So for Satish, the salary is 30,000, which is echoed back to the client. And you're able to see this on the, on the screen. So this is how the normal flow is, but how an hacker 
utilizes uh, this weakness. So let me tell you what happens here is. So what is the weakness here is whatever input that we are giving here is directly supplied to the query. So this is the weakness the hacker uses. So instead of giving the input like an username, the hacker gives it to be part of a malicious SQL query. So he just types uh, or one equals to one. And what happens is this is directly passed to your SQL query. So you can see here now your query turns into select username salary from employee where username is equal to null or one equals one. So this will be true. One equals one will be true. So it's going to fetch all the usernames and uh, salaries from the database. So since one equals one is true, the query executes and then it's going to fetch the entire bunch of data and that data is visible on the screen. So this is the weakness. What is the weakness we are exploiting here? Whatever input that's coming in to the input text box is directly fed into the SQL query on the server side script. And that is passed on towards the database server for execution, wherein it fetches the uh, results as per the hacker's uh, wish. So an hacker can execute a lot of queries using your uh, text box input if he is going to be supplied with this kind of a feature, wherein you just take the input without sanitizing the input, you're passing it to the uh, database server. So that's what we have seen here. And uh, now we come to the definition of SQL injection. What is SQL injection? It's nothing but malicious SQL queries as we are seeing here that contains or one equal to one union and, and these queries are inserted into the system via the user input fields. And what it does is it, this manipulates the databases. So this query runs on the databases and it's able to fetch vulnerable sensitive in, in information to the hacker. So this is called manual SQL injection. And what we understand from here is we have not sanitized our input. Now we are checking what kind of input is coming in. We are directly feeding the input to the query and thereby we are having all these issues. So how to prevent the SQL injection? That is the next question. Prevention is like uh, after SQL injection occurs, uh, that's a different story. But even before, uh, how to prevent it? It's a coding thing. So what is that we understand here is the main weakness is we are taking the input directly passing it to the query. So instead of directly passing it to the query, what changes we are going to do is we are going to use some special methods. We call them prepared statements. So these methods will take care of binding the input to the query and then it will convert the input to plain text. So by converting the input to plain text, what we achieve is we, we are not running a malicious SQL query. We're just comparing the value that is coming in. So here what will happen is we'll be just checking select where username comma salary from employee where username is equal to since it's converted to text. We'll just check whether that user is pre present in the database. Since this is text, there'll be no match for that specific user. And what will be returned is no employee found with that username. So this is a very simple uh, process which we can catch during uh, code reviews. So before implementation of a systems, so when we are coding um, uh, applications which interact with the database, we have to ensure that we don't directly map the input to the SQL queries. So using prepared statements and methods uh, like this will eliminate all these issues. So that is with respect to how to prevent a SQL injection. And uh, now what I will do is I'll uh, show you the same demo. Now I have uh, refined this specific form to use prepared statements. So now this form does the same thing. Like if I submit, it gives me the salary. Now one more thing I'm going to check here is what if I give some malicious uh, SQL queries here to get the things out. Now you can see no employee information found with that username. So what it does is it takes the SQL query, uh, converts that to text and it uh, checks it on the database. So this is about manual SQL injection and uh, we have seen how to prevent it. Prevention can be done using code reviews uh, before deployment. That is one thing. And after you're deployed and uh, you need to know whether you have SQL injection issues on your uh, applications, there's one more answer to that. You can do penetration testing on your systems. So you can go with automated SQL injection attacks on your system. So you can use some tools 
and you can try test your systems uh, to check whether they have uh, such issues. So I'm going to now talk to you about automated SQL injection, which is nothing but having a tool to perform the same attack that we have done earlier. So I'll just go with the architecture for this demonstration now. So I have a vulnerable web application here, Utility Day, which uh, comes with uh, pre-installed on Metasploitable 2 machines. So nothing too much technical. Let's understand it this way. We have a web application which has this vulnerability. And of, of course, it maintains uh, its data on a MySQL database server. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Kali Linux. And uh, inside Kali Linux, we have a pre-installed tool, SQL map. So to use the SQL map, what we need is we just need the URL for this application. So where your website runs, that URL you take. And using that URL, you perform this attack using SQL map. That's a SQL injection attack. So once when you are able to carry out this attack, we are not going to write the uh, queries manually here. So the tool will take care of the attack and then it will dump the data out from the database. So this is the setup. Uh, nothing to worry about the environment or the setup here. I'll just show you how things are done, how we can perform SQL injection attacks using tools. Just have an uh, overall understanding of this. For this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. Uh, I told you I'll use uh, my Kali Linux machine. And uh, this is that specific uh, web application which we are going to test, which has got a vulnerable uh, SQL injection vulnerability. So all we need is the URL for this. That's it. So once when you have the URL for that application, you can go with uh, SQL map commands. So the tool we use is SQL map. And uh, we just give SQL map and uh, the URL. So the command is SQL map hyphen u, and then the URL for your web application. That's it. You start the attack. So it's going to take some time initially when you run. So let me just give you. I already run this, so it just finishes off fast, and uh, we'll select zero. So it's able to understand what is the backend uh, DBMS for my application. It's MySQL. So after this, you can carry out a lot of other attacks, like you can dump all the databases out, like uh, what is the databases, uh, what are the databases out from that specific uh, application. So, so it has dumped all the databases from my MySQL uh, database uh, handling that application. So these are the databases. Not only that, we can dump the tables from a specific database. I select DBWA. I'll be able to dump the tables from this specific database. Let me clear the screen and uh, let me go to that specific uh, command. So this is nothing but the URL for the web application. The database I'm focusing is on DVWA and uh, just dump all the tables out. So it's just using a tool. It's going to be very easy. Uh, just get the application and these are the two tables inside my database DVWA. Not only that, we can also see the columns inside this specific uh, table. So how to see that columns, we can go with a uh, command like this. Uh, that is SQL map, the application's URL. The database is DVWA. The table name is users. And uh, what are the columns in that specific table? We are going to extract it now. So let's give an S here and a zero. So you can very well see here we have extracted all the tables. Uh, I mean, all the columns from the table users. So the hacker is going to find out password is one of the columns inside the table. So he's interested in understanding the passwords. So knowing the passwords. So what the next step that this tool allows us, it can also dump the passwords for us by cracking the hashes. So the command here is SQL map view, and we focus on this specific uh, database for this table, dump the data from the table. So we'll say an yes. It's going to ask us for certain things like, uh, do you want to store the hashes in a separate file? I'll say no. And do you want to perform a dictionary-based attack? Yes. And uh, now I've already run this. That's why it's very fast. You can very well see here, it's able to throw you what is the username and what is the password hash and also the cracked uh, hash, that is the the plain text password for that hash from the table. So what we have done here is we have taken this web application. We just used the URL of the web application. Since it had this SQL injection vulnerability, we were able to dump all the tables, the databases, 
and we were able to dump the columns and also we are able to crack the password hashes. And this was possible because most of the passwords were very plain, simple and very easy. And it, we, we were able to use a word list and crack it up. So this is how dangerous it is. Uh, automated SQL injection attacks. If you just know the URL for any web, web application, you can go ahead and perform these attacks.